Today, we listen to six of our outstanding alumni speaking on the topic, Building a Career Startup. This is a special career orientation talk, online program for our graduating students and also for our other junior and senior high school students. Before we start anything, let's look back at our school's vision, mission statement, which says Chiang Kai-shek College is an educational institution that strives for excellence. It is committed not only to nation building, but also take note of the last two words, international concern. True enough, our alumni are major contributors to society whether they are in the Philippines or anywhere else across the globe. Our six outstanding alumni speakers today are the best shining example of how we citizens excel in different fields of endeavor wherever we are whether we're here in our motherland or elsewhere. The speakers will be properly introduced one by one later on by our students. But on a personal note, having seen all of them grow up since their high school days, I can truly say I am very, very proud of them. I'm sure their teachers would feel the same way. Our six speakers are all work emulating. They are all professionals located in different parts of the globe. Two of them in the United States, two of them in our, um, um, how do you call that? Our, Cultural Heritage China, one of them, an OPA in South Korea, and another one um, doing great in Singapore. On behalf of our school, let me congratulate them on their success and also thank them for sharing their time, expertise, and experiences with us today. My dear students, do listen attentively to them and actively participate in today's program. I'm sure um, we will have an open forum before we end today's program to ask questions. I assure you that there is much to be learned from today's activity. Again, Good morning, everyone, and happy Chinese New Year. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sir Jude. It is indeed important that we facilitate webinars like this to help students build self-esteem, have the courage to work toward a brighter future, and witness and be inspired by none other than our alumni. On that note, Ms. Faustina Sia is here to introduce our first speaker. Um, hello. Our first speaker for today is a practicing neurologist and physician stationed in Ohio, USA. He is licensed in the fields of neurology, psychiatry, and electrodiagnostic medicine. Our speaker is currently appointed in the General Neurology slash Sleep Medicine University Hospitals Portage Medical Center and is the designated Stroke Medical Director there. He is also a Clinical Assistant Professor in the, in the Department of Neurology, Faculty of Medicine, Case Western, 
Portage Medical Center and is the designated oh, Faculty of Medicine Case Western Reserve University and Clinical Adjunct Faculty for the Lincoln Memorial University LMU DBUS College of Osteopathic Medicine. He's currently affiliated with not one, but seven university hospitals across several different cities in Ohio. He graduated cum laude from the University of the Philippines in both of his degrees, which are a BS in Basic Medical Sciences and Doctor of Medicine. He had also interned at the Philippine General Hospital. During his time there, he had managed to graduate six overall in, uh, out of 10 outstanding graduates in academics for the class of 2005, as well as nine overall in 10 outstanding interns for the class of 2005. He had also been awarded three different UP Scholar Awards and an Onking Foundation Scholarship Award. For a while, he had worked as a physician here in the Philippines, also volunteering as a medical doctor for the 23rd Southeast Asian Games in Manila, before ultimately pursuing deeper education in neurology in the States, starting a preliminary medicine internship at the University Hospitals of Cleveland, then spending two years at the University of Chicago Medical Center as a neurology resident, one year spent as chief resident, and staying there for another two years in a clinical Neurophysiology Fellowship, EMG Track, and Sleep Medicine Fellowship, respectively. He has seven publications, four of which are about my myasthenia gravis in the elderly, and the rest, a case study for neurolo neurological emergencies, and two case reports on a 57-year-old woman with CNS vasculitis, intracerebral hemorrhage, short Sjogren's syndrome, and SSB seropositivity. And continuing with the theme of sevens, he is involved in seven associations, uh, which include the American Academy of Sleep Medicine, American Association of Neuromuscular and Electri Electrodiagnostic Medicine, uh, American Academy of Neurology, University of the Philippines Alumni Association, Philippine General Hospital Association of Medical Alumni, University of the Philippine Medical Association, and the longest one he's been in, the Chiang Kai-shek College Alumni Association. Please give a warm welcome to our very own Dr. Marvin S. C. Thank you for that introduction. Um, I'm uh, just gonna start uh, sharing my screen. All right, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Hold on. All right. Good morning, Manila. I'm Marvin C. Batch 98. I'm uh, currently in the Cleveland, Ohio area. And it's about 9.43 p.m. Thursday here, February 3rd. It's good to see some familiar faces. I'd uh, like to acknowledge some people in the audience, my parents, my family, Eileen, Megan, and Evan, my teachers, Sir Jude, Mom Cynthia, Miss Letty Ching, Miss Wylin, uh, familiar faces, Candice Chua and Raymond Ong, Amity, I believe I saw Millet and uh, Burnett as well. I'm sorry if I'm missing others who I know or who knows me. Thank you for the invitation for uh, to speak at your career day 2022. I have spent pretty much all my pre-college life in Chiang Kai-shek College from nursery until I graduated fourth year high school in 1998. I did well in math and science, especially biology, won many competitions in math and science, both in and out of school. I had excellent teachers and counsel. 
most notably Ms. Uh, Christina Monsanto. I don't know if she's uh, around in the audience, who by the way, made us memorize all muscles and nerves in the body in the third year high school. Yes, I still remember that. And Ms. Cynthia Isidro, who was our guidance counselor at that time. Without uh, disregarding my other teachers then who helped shape what I am now, other notable personalities in my life then were the late uh, Ms. Lucita Sia, Ms. Letty Ching, and uh, school president then, Ms. Joanne C. Cotio. In 1998, I uh, graduated salutatorian both in English and Chinese. After high school, I ended up in the seven year UP intermed program in uh, UP Manila. I say ended up because this was serendipitous. I was the first and only medical person in my family. My sister, Michelle, who also graduated from Chiang Kai-shek College and eventually went to UP Diliman for accounting, encouraged me to check a checkbox in the UPCAT form for the intermed program. I remember applying for physical therapy and civil engineering courses then in UP and other universities. I wasn't really expecting anything. Needless to say, the rest is history. The UP Intermed program is a seven year integrated medical school program whereby 40 high school graduates are chosen nationally for the program. Students do a two year abbreviated and focused pre-med program and then you get into the medical school where other regular medical students from other colleges are added to the class later. Without bragging, medical school is not the easiest. Ability to memorize facts is useful, but you need more than that. Numerous late night studying, seemingly endless lectures and exams, grueling clinical rotations, Sleep deprivation gets to all of you. Most importantly, numerous missed life events. I was lucky I did not live in a dorm because we just live like 10 minutes away. Unlike some of my classmates from other parts of the country. Here are just some of the things I did in medical school and I chose the ones, of course, that I looked good and I was awake. During medical school, my paths would cross with Dr. Eileen Wong, who is now my wife, and another Chiang Kai-shek College alumnus, Dr. Geraldine Zamora, who eventually became our matchmaker. April 2005 came, and finally I am graduating from UP College of Medicine. That is another fork in the road. While most of my high school classmates by then have been working about three or so years, I was just starting. And I was a newly minted general practitioner at that time. I passed the Philippine board exam in August, 2005, placing 11th nationally. And by the way, Geraldine Zamora topped our batches board exam in 2005. Then what? Do I pursue residency in the Philippines? Do I go somewhere else? I would be lying if I didn't admit to looking elsewhere. My eldest sister, Eileen, was in Taiwan. And my other sister, second sister, Michelle, was in Singapore at that time. I also briefly looked at Australia and, of course, the US. Eventually, I decided to pursue residency training in the US much to the dismay of my then girlfriend, Eileen, who was going to pursue internal medicine residency at UPPGH and who I had to leave behind in the Philippines. From 2005 to 2006, I actually was doing small gigs here and there, all the while with my eye squarely on passing the US medical licensure exams and getting accepted into a US residency position. Finally, I had plenty of time. So I met with some of my high school classmates who I had barely seen since high school seven years ago. 
I volunteered at the Southeast Asian Games as a physician when it was held in Manila in 2005. And I did some real doctoring as an island physician in Boracay for about 10 days and did some clinic in Pasay City that provided me with some income from someone who hasn't had any ever. Eventually, I passed my US MLE exams and off I went to the US in 2006. That was actually my first time setting foot in the US. Unlike some of my high school classmates, I had never been to the US before, never been away from my family for months. I stayed with some family friends who I will be eternally grateful for. I spent 10 days in California for part of my exam, and then I ended up staying about six months in New York City. My adoptive Filipino Chinese American families taught me some of the ins and, ins and outs of American life. I spent six months in New York through the winter of 2006, waiting for the outcome of my interviews until I knew in March 2007 that I would be spending my first year in Cleveland, Ohio. So what did I do in New York for six months? Well, I was doing touristy things on the warmest days of the week. It didn't matter that the warmest might be 38 degrees Fahrenheit or three degrees Celsius. I experienced my first snow in a random street corner in front of a church in downtown Cleveland, Ohio during one of my interviews and whipped up my first snowman in the backyard of my adoptive family in New York. My internship year was sent, spent in Cleveland, Ohio. Now I am alone, my first year living alone in the US, no car, on call pretty much every fourth day or so. I lived literally across the hospital. I had to work on my Taglish accent the first two years that I was in the US. I had to adjust to the local lifestyle and I had to adjust to the conversational English and different slang. Yes, they talk too fast. The year was hard, the winter was cold, training was good, and somehow I made it through. 2008 brought hope as I was going to Chicago, Illinois for my neurology residency, where I would stay for the next five years. I was excited at the prospect of city life, having grown up in Manila pretty much my whole life. I met a few outstanding Filipino nurses, few Filipino attending physicians, and few Filipino co-trainees. Of course, there were Caucasians and other ethnicities as well. I eventually became a chief resident in 2010. And then there was Chicago Chinatown, which we frequented for family grocery, familiar grocery and the noodle soup and the fried rice and the roast duck and the salt and pepper shrimp and the bubble milk tea. My wife, Eileen, joined me in 2010 in Chicago and her first child was born there. So what do you do in a place halfway across the world when you have some free time? You find things to do. Travel, cook, call home. Viber, or Zoom for that matter, was not quite a thing yet at that time. Meet up with classmates, meet up with other Filipinos, go eat Chinese food, Go eat Filipino food with lechon, Pacquiao party, and more Pacquiao party. I don't know if you guys are old enough to know Pacquiao. 2013 then brought us to Wichita, Kansas. Finally, I'm done with training. And now I'm an attending physician. Real life begins. We stayed there for five years. And this is my parents visiting at that time. In 2018, my wife decided to pursue sleep medicine fellowship training and as fate will have it, we're back in the Cleveland area again. Our son was born in Cleveland. And then the global pandemic hit and even these little ones had to mask up and travels dried up. 
So what do I do? I am a neurologist and a sleep medicine specialist, basically a doctor who specializes in the diagnosis and treatment of brain, spinal cord, muscle, and nerve diseases. I do not operate. I'm not a surgeon. So think migraine, stroke, Bell's palsy, epilepsy, Parkinson's, dementia, those kinds of things. I am also a doctor who specializes in the diagnosis and treatment of sleep disorders. Think sleep apnea, insomnia, restless legs, and others. What exactly do I do? As a neurologist, I see patients in clinic, I round in the hospital, I do testing, I interpret testing, and I do Botox injections for certain conditions. As a sleep specialist, I see patients in clinic and I read sleep studies. So over the years, what are the lessons that I've learned that I would like to impart? Well, first of all, do your best, always, the first time. Dance like there's no one watching. You may not have another chance. Number two is aim high, libre ang mangarap, but set realistic goals and don't quit. This is not necessarily being inflexible. It's one thing that you keep following a failing trajectory and another to continue persevering for a realistic ending. The next one, Compete only with yourself, not with others. There will always, always be people smarter than you, prettier than you, have more achievements than you. But strive to be a better version of you tomorrow than what you are today. Next is happiness and confidence comes from within. Don't rely on other people or things to give it to you. This is my daughter singing Moana in Indiana. Feeling yeah. Next, plan ahead. A lack of planning on your part doesn't constitute an emergency on my end. I learned this the hard way during one of our personal trips in the hinterlands of Michigan, our daughter started having fever out of nowhere. We forgot to bring paracetamol. The nearest drugstore opened late was 45 minutes one way away, and it was almost 11 p.m. I had to drive to the next city with an open pharmacy that late to buy paracetamol. It was a pretty drive, with only the moonlight and stars and literally three cars in the highway both ways at that hour. But that's not gonna happen again. Also up 12,000 something feet in the Rocky Mountain National Park in Colorado, the air was so thin it made breathing even just seated difficult. Luckily, we bought some oxygen cans in the city before we left. Maybe placebo? Who knows? It worked. Lastly, whatever you do, whatever you decide in life, do what you love. Money is important, but loving what you do gives you the staying power. Longevity and durability trumps fad. It's just a summary of what we talked about. Thank you, congratulations seniors, and good luck. Now, those were the nice pictures, but in real life, it's like this. This was my commute this afternoon. We have a snowstorm today, and I got lucky to be behind a snowplow truck because it, because it cleared the road before me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. C. 
you have shared your career journey with us and address that there will always sacrifices that makes the results more enjoyable. Still, it is very important to look back and see how much one have already achieved, then gain the confidence to strive for more, to constantly do our best. Like you said, doctor, especially the first time. May we have Ms. Rian Pino to introduce our second speaker. Our next guest speaker graduated from Chiang Kai-shek College back in the year 2000 and proceeded to take his bachelor's degree in computer science at the Ateneo de Manila University. He also received a certificate for completing an 18-unit teacher certificate program from the College of Education in De La Salle University during the year 2005. He is fluent in foreign languages, namely English, Filipino, Mandarin, and Hokkien, which has helped him as an interpreter, he also worked as a Mandarin translator for Miss China and Miss Malaysia during the pre-pageant judging for Miss Asia Pacific 2003. He also translated the script of Regal Films entry to the 28th Metro Manila Film Festival Manopo from English and Tagalog to Mandarin. He not only worked as a translator, but also as a web developer. He has offered his services and has developed projects like the Supreme Court's inventory of environmental cases and the Vegan Grocer Philippines e-commerce website. He also previously worked as an IT consultant and web developer at Euracom Corporation and as an instructor and IT coordinator at the Confucius Institute in the Ateneo de Manila University. Not only that, but he also worked as a resource person for the said university's Chinese studies, studies program. He also worked as a CAI staff and mathematics teacher at their very own Chiang Kai-shek College. Currently, he is working under Navitair Philippines Incorporation as their team manager and reservation systems product trainer. He is also an assistant instructor at the Ateneo de Manila University, JG School of Management, Quantitative Methods, and Information Technology Department. Please give him a warm welcome, Mr. Raymond Ong. Hello there, good morning, everyone. So let me just share my screen, then we'll start. Just give me a second. Can anyone help me confirm if you can see my screen right now? Anyone? Not yet, not yet. Mm -hmm. None yet. Hold on. How about now? Can you see my screen? Anyone? No, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. We, we can only, I know, we should share a lot of computer sound, but not oh, the screen. Okay. Computer sound only. Computer sound only. Okay. How about now? Yeah, yes. we see it. Okay, good. good. Thank you. Okay, so let me begin. So my name is Raymond Ong, and I am really, really happy to join the CKSC Career Day for everyone today. So let me start off with my three-point agenda, which I'll be discussing happily with everyone. And that will be number one, about me. Uh, the introduction. Number two, the shapers in my career choices. And number three, becoming on who I am today. So let me just start off with a quick introduction of myself. So hello, everyone. My name, as I mentioned, is Raymond Ong, and I'll be discussing these three points today, starting off with basic profile of myself, educational background next, and then my professional background. So from a basic profile perspective, 
my name, my full name is Ong Raymond Kari Acosta. I used to tease my classmates before and ask them to guess what A was in my middle name. And people will often say it's Ang because I look very Chinese. But that's not true. I'm only partial Chinese because my middle name is actually Acosta, very Filipino. Now, for my Chinese name, it's Wang Cheng Han. And then right now, since I'm based in Korea, I also translated my name into Korean. So I'm Wang Song Han in Korea. So I'm currently based in Seoul, South Korea. I moved over here last June 2021. I was supposed to go back home in December. However, I was requested to stay longer here for another year. So we'll see what that will bring me to. Now, from languages spoken, so I do know, as mentioned earlier, I do know Filipino, English, Mandarin, and Tukien. But right now, since I'm in Korean, I need to at least learn the basic survival Korean. So, annyeonghaseyo, yorobun, chonen, Raymond, imnida. Now, for my educational background, this one, I find it a little bit tricky and interesting as well. Of course, I'll need to start off with our school, our very own Chiang Kai-shek College. Almost all levels were taken in Chiang Kai-shek College for me. This was my high school graduation photo. From nursery to kindergarten, grade school, grades one to six, and then high school year one to four. So it was pre-K-12 days. So it was just 10 years for grade school and high school in total. Now, after graduation from Chiang Kai-shek College, I moved over to Ateneo de Manila, and this is my diploma. So from Ateneo, my course is quite long, so I will read it slowly. My course was Bachelor of Science, major in Computer Science, minor in Chinese Studies, with certification in Chinese Language Proficiency. So the key word here that I am very proud of is the fact that I was able to easily get the minor degree because of my previous knowledge of Chinese from, of course, our alma mater, Chiang Kai Shek College. So after Ateneo, I move over to the rival school, De La Salle University. But for De La Salle University, it was just to fulfill a dream of myself, which was to become a teacher. So I took some units and finished the teacher certificate program uh, from De La Salle. It was a pretty interesting two, three terms while studying this course. But one thing that topped most, that topped all of these credentials is the fact that I am a registered teacher now. So I'm a professional teacher. I took the licensure examination last 2006, if I'm not mistaken. And to be proud of myself even more, I actually graduated, uh, finished the exam as top number seven. And my scores were pretty impressive, I would say, uh, because uh, I studied really well and really hard for that one. But one thing that really made me proud of myself during that period was the fact that our school, Chiang Kai-shek College, actually recognized that and was proud of my own achievement in there. So thank you, Chiang Kai-shek College, for honing me and congratulating me during that time. So enough of that. If I proceed now with the current situation, I'm currently a professional. So looking at my track records here, I will divide it into two different areas. The first area will be the academe. So from an academe standpoint, I started my whole career in Chiang Kai-shek College. In 2004 to 2006, I was actually a high school Chinese mathematics teacher. So for algebra, second year high school that time, and then trigonometry, fourth year high school that time. And then after that, I did some extra work as a substitute teacher for high school English department. I taught algebra, statistics, and geometry. So after that, I transferred over to Ateneo. So I was offered a job to teach Chinese for professionals 
and then eventually took one semester, Chinese language and culture one, a track. These are for people with zero background in Chinese. I was also invited to teach in the School of Management for computer applications due to my background in computer. And then after that, I got hired as well as an instructor in the Ateneo Confucius Institute, which is an affiliate of Ateneo de Manila University at the Confucius Institute in China. So the courses are pretty varied. I started off with a basic Chinese one, and then up until the whole business Chinese course was given to me. So business Chinese one to three and corporate Chinese one to three were all given to me. So right now I'm, be, I'm doing freelancing in Chinese language, which I'll be showing you later on. But on the other side, while doing everything, while doing all of these, I'm also in the corporate and IT world. So in the Ateneo Confucius Institute, I'm also a web developer at the same time a systems developer for them from 2007 to 2018. And then right now, from 2006 up until the present, I work for a company named Naviter. So I'm not sure if this is familiar to everyone, but if you go to cebupacificair.com, you go to airasia.com, jetstar.com, at the bottom, you will see the word Navitaire in there. That's the company where I'm working at at the moment. So Navitaire transformed from Navitaire to Navitaire, an Accenture company, to the present Navitaire, an Amadeus company. I have been working there since 2006 up until today. I started off as a software quality assurance engineer. And then I transferred to product trainer because I felt like teaching is still part of me that time. Up until the point when I was promoted and I'm now leading the Asia Pacific product and learning services team. And up until just recently, I was requested to be on site here in Seoul, South Korea as the consultant for one of our airlines under the Amadeus parent company here in Korea. So this is just a photo of me in the Jeju Air office here in Seoul. So given that one, let me, if you try to look at these other pictures on what I do today within Navitair. So this is a, a picture of me in Tiger Air Taiwan office in Taipei. This is me in London, United Kingdom after a training with TUI Fly, another airline there. And then this is me with all the UNI and OPPA of Seoul, South Korea, Jeju Air. And this was a post from one of my clients before after attending my session in Hong Kong. So you will see that I'm actually enjoying my job. So. Let me tell you why am I enjoying my job. So let's go through the process on how I reach this point. So I'll be moving on to the second part of the agenda, which is the shapers portion, the influences of my career choices. So for me, choose a job you love and you will never have to work a day in your life. So I'm enjoying my, my job. So basically, every single day is something that I look forward to. And I have the Korean translation and the Chinese translation at the bottom as well for reference. Now, what do I mean when I say shapers or my influences in my career path? I think that for me, there were four critical shapers in my career choices. The first one is aspiration. When I talk about aspiration, I'm talking about my desire, want to achieve something, my ambition, what I want to become. So that's the aspiration. The second component is my family, how my family influenced my decision in life. Third will be the trend on what market trend was during that period of time when I was making decisions. And then finally, my personal skill. What is unique about me? What's my talent? What can I do differently? So with these four, I was able to come up with a definition of me on where I want my life to go to. 
So let me go through this one by one with everyone. Starting off with the first shaper, which is aspiration. So when I talk about aspiration, the primary question that we need to ask ourselves, what do you want to be when you grow up? I believe every one of you were asked by your teachers at some point in time about your ambitions in life. So when I grow up, I want to be what? This question was asked to me by my grade one teacher and my answer was very firm already during that time. My answer was, I want to become a teacher. So being a teacher has been a dream for me for the longest time, seven years old, eight years old, nine years old, up until I graduated from high school, up until I graduated from college. So the problem here is that how did I prepare myself? So I know that I am equipped with a dream, a dream of becoming a teacher. I am equipped with a goal. I was seven years old then, so I don't really know what a goal is, but it, is, it has been unconsciously set for me that I want to become a teacher. Of course, with this goal that I had, I need to do something probably unconsciously since I was still young back then. So I will be adding here how I reinforce this one. So from a reinforcement perspective, I tried to start observing my teachers. So it sounds creepy, it sounds stalking, but I really observed my teachers' behaviors during that time because I want to become like them. I respect them. I look up to them as my role models. And I want to be like them eventually. So observing them is one of those unconscious things that I have done when I was still young to make sure that I will eventually achieve this goal of becoming a teacher myself. Other than that, I tried to mimic them or sometimes I even role play being a teacher when I'm alone. It's a little bit scary actually. But if you ask my cousins, my brother, my sister, they will say that it has been a scary childhood for me because I'm talking to myself, because I'm practicing and preparing myself to become a teacher. So I tried writing. I practiced writing cursive and making sure that my handwriting will be teacher level. This is a picture of my physics notebook back when I was in fourth year high school. I made sure that it is legible and it can be photocopied by everybody else. This was my class record when I finally got the chance to become a teacher. I made sure that it is the cleanest possible class record of them all. And finally, these are my test papers given to my students back then. So I tried to play around with it, but for me, these test papers are very important. I made sure that they are designed in such a way that it's very neat to look at. So I was equipped with my dream and a goal. I tried to reinforce it and what happened to me, I became one. So I would like you, everybody in this call, to be able to think back and think about what was your childhood dream? Where do you want to go? What do you want to be when you grow up? So that's my first item, which is aspiration. So let's look at our shaper number two. Shaper number two is family. So family will be our first encounter. So the question there is, what do you see the people close to you do? So why is that important? For me, I grew up in a travel agency family. Travel agency was the family business back then. So passport, I know this ever since I was a kid. I know what a boarding pass was, a bag tag was. I know all of those. So from an equipped perspective, I, was, I had that chance to have an early exposure. So I have seen things done 
how bookings or reservations to airlines are made. I have seen tickets being issued. I have seen passengers fly. So that early exposure made me equipped with the skills on this area, which my family influenced me in one way or the other. Of course, the second point is experience. Even if I was a child back then, I was 13 years old, I think, when I was asked to attend a training about the reservation system. So I attended that. And after that, I got calls, I made bookings myself, experiencing it was a big help. And then other than that, how did I reinforce? I was curious. There were a lot of things about airlines that fascinated me a lot. There were a lot of countries where I am interested with. So I got curious with the country, the culture. I was curious with how the airline business was ran. So given that curiosity, I tried to observe more and learn more about them as I grew up. And of course, as I noted here, observation. Another scary thing about me is that I actually looked at the schedules of airlines and I actually memorized them during my spare time. So that was a reinforcement from my end. So look at me, look at where I am right now. I'm working for the aviation industry. Third shaper will be the trend. This was an interesting one. So if you try to look at the question here is, what is the market trend at that time? As mentioned earlier, I graduated in the year 2000. The question was, I don't think any of you were born that time. So what was in year 2000? In year 2000, we had one challenge. It was called the Y2K bug, the millennium bug. So that was when the time, the year will shift from 1999 to 2000. And there was a, a new saying that once it sets to 00, it goes back to 1900 which deletes all the records. That was a scary time. So there were news like this saying that you need to turn off your computer before midnight of December 31, 1999. Because once you wake up in Jan on January 1, 2000, everything will be gone. So the trend that time was to fix this bug. So computer technology was the popular one. It's a popular course during that time. I personally never thought that I'll be going into the computer world. However, how was I equipped during that time? I remember attending my first ever computer programming class. I hope my teacher is in this call. So during that time, we were asked to do a short project, a small project to code a, a graphics using basic, turbo basic or Turbo Pascal during that time. That was very old technology. So education gave me exposure to computer technology. And after that, I realized that I did have logical and analytical thinking. I'm able to do problem solving. Give me a scenario, I can, I can give you a, an algorithm on how to build that as a code. So I was inspired to learn more. So, for everyone, just a side note, don't underestimate your high school subjects because they will be very useful to you as you grow up. How did I reinforce? I do small application development. So when I was teaching in Chiang Kai-shek College, I was teaching parabola that time. So since I know how to code, I use a small application, I create a small application to show my students how a parabola is formed if you have infinite points and then form that parabola shape. So using small application development, I was able to do more and make things more efficient and simplified. So that has been a practice of mine. I also read and buy computer textbooks but I'm not really a reader. So I just browse through it and get ideas from computer textbooks. 
And sometimes I watch YouTube videos to just see how things are being coded so I can apply it to my own code. So that's how I reinforced and got interested in computer technology. So right now I'm working in an IT firm. And finally, the fourth shaper here is skill. So the question here is, do you have any unique talent or skill that you can take advantage of? So if you try to look back, for me, this was one of the special skills that I got. Although the statement might sound wrong to everyone, but Chinese language has helped me a lot in my career. Of course, where else did I get my Chinese language skill? I have never been to China when I was studying in Chiang Kai Shek College. I've never been to Taiwan nor Hong Kong, or Hong Kong probably one or two times. I never studied in a different country for the language. I studied everything through the help of my Chinese language teachers in Chiang Kai Shek College. So I was able, I'm now able to teach Chinese. And this is my handwriting in Chinese. It, it, it's not as good as before anymore, but I think it's still presentable at some point. So Chinese language, as I said, is a special skill. Why? Because Chinese language itself is composed of four sub skills that we need to learn. And I believe every one of you has all these. Number one is your tingli, your listening skills. You understand Chinese, you can listen. Next is to speak. So you can say, you can speak Chinese. So you should be proud of that because it's a plus one in your resume saying that, oh, I know how to speak another language. Next is to, this is already a bonus. If you can read Chinese, then that's definitely a bonus point. And finally, which is the writing component of it. So given that I personally know all four, my customers in China, in Taiwan, in Hong Kong, in Singapore, in Malaysia, were all amazed that, huh, how did you learn that? You're not even Chinese. So that was a question which I personally, am, I like hearing that from because I can easily say that I learned it through education. So I was equipped by education, by my great teachers in Chiang Kai Shek College. And other than that, of course, interest needs to be in there. It might be difficult, but find interest in it and it will bring you to places. Trust me on that. Reinforcement during those periods or probably even after my career choices, I took the HSK exam. So just to make sure that my level is still okay. And then I attend conferences as well, just to make sure that I get refreshed of new information. And then finally, practice. If you have the opportunity to do it, why not? Speak to your classmates, speak to your teachers in Chinese. That's perfectly fine. Learn from it, be comfortable with it. That's why I say here that Chinese language is a special skill. Now, these four, if I try to summarize it from a career influence shapers to make you remember them easily, F for family, A for aspiration, S for skill, T for trend. These are the fast decision makers and shapers for your career. Try to revisit your life and then look into these four aspects and see where you will land. It will be an interesting you will see an interesting result afterwards. Now, let's talk about the last part, the becoming part, the success factor, or where all the fast concept brought me. Success factors under the becoming group. I want to look back on my career and be proud of the work and be proud that I tried everything. So all those four components, I actually went through them one by one. So if we try to look at the first one for family, let me probably remove this one for family. I am now in the aviation industry and the travel industry. It used to be just a dream to travel around. It used to be just a concept that I worked for. My family had the tra travel agency business. But if you try to look at it right now, where I am, I'm in Korea right now. I can't even believe that. And worldwide, 
I have been to places and places that I have never imagined that I'll be in, like Nigeria, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Switzerland. These are places that I never expected that I'll be in. But look at the numbers. Pre-pandemic, 2019. My record for 2019 was 120 flights taken for 2019. And for 2020, even if it, if what, it was just January and February, I already got 20 flights during that time. So my job in this aviation industry brought me to places. And other than bringing me to places, you will see that I have been to areas which I never expected that I'll be in. So for, for those of you who are K-drama fans in Netflix, this was the shooting venue of hometown cha-cha-cha here in Korea. And the second one for all of you who are BTS fans, this is actually the bus stop that they use for their album. I, just, I was just there two weeks ago. And then this was in Japan. This was in Turkey. This was in UK, London. This was in Taj Mahal, India. And then this was in Sydney, Australia. There are more pictures, but I just don't want to share them anymore. The, the page is too small for that. But yes, the career decision brought me to all these places. Now, from an aspiration perspective, I look at my success here under education and teaching. I said earlier that I want to become a teacher and here I am, I am a teacher. I had my students, this was way back in 2006, my last batch in Chiang Kai-shek College when I was still a teacher. And then this was the contest that we had. And this was a client training done in Singapore for Jetstar. And then this was uh, another training class completed with CityLink back in Jakarta, Indonesia. And then I was, my picture was used as a banner ad for corporate training courses for Ateneo. And then finally, this is my freelancing activity at this point, given that we're on a pandemic. Then this one is an online training that I do for Chinese language. So those were my first batch of students. And I just want to show you a short clip as well. I hope the sound will register correctly. So I was So for the corporate Chinese course, we usually start with the organizational structure. And then from there, we attend trainings about corporate cultures, about task delegation, about financial reports, all of these business aspects of Chinese world. We actually and then moving over to the third part, which is the S part, the skill. Of course, the one that I'm very proud of, my language skills. Language skills for me brought me opportunities. Why? I got the opportunity to speak in front of a group of Chinese teachers from all around the world to discuss about lesson planning. I got the opportunity to translate a movie script from English to Chinese. My calligraphy was actually featured in Manopo 2 back then. In 2003, I was an interpreter for Miss Asia and Pacific. In 2008, I had a TV segment because of the Beijing Olympics. 2010, as you can see on the picture, it was a best lesson plan design. And then for now, since in, in my current job, I'm the only one who can speak Chinese. So all the opportunity for Chinese speaking country comes to me. And since I, know, since I know the system as well, I was the one, the perfect person to do it for the company. And I have highlighted specifically Travel Sky because this is actually China government system. And I went there to do a systems demo as well. And then for the last entity, which is the trend part, you will see that I'm in the IT industry, computer programming. So you will see in here that I'm actually meeting with the team, supporting programming and system. And then I also made sure that I bring in Chinese culture into 
my office, my corporate world. This was a mid-autumn festival celebration, a dice game celebration, uh, pre-pandemic after a team meeting. And of course, during the pandemic, since I have time, I created a client server dice game just to make sure that my team will still embrace the Chinese culture and make sure that they appreciate the Chinese culture even more. And finally, the website that I have created for the vegan grocer. So this is still in the works. It's not yet out in public. So given that one, let me summarize. So for myself, family was the aviation industry. Aspiration is my teaching. Skill will be my Chinese skills. And finally, for the trend, I'm in the IT industry. So putting all these together, I was able to speak in different conferences. So this was a conference in the USA. So I was sharing about my training experience, systems training experiences. And then this was me teaching in Hong Kong. This was me teaching in Australia. And then finally, this was me teaching in South Korea. So adding in the E, which is the, to equip yourselves. So you know how you were equipped by the influences of FAST. And finally, make sure that you reinforce everything that you have. So your acronym right now becomes longer. It's faster, faster. Remember that. And before I end, leaving you a note that there is a career path out there for you. Look around, recall, sharpen the saw. You'll definitely find the path and eventually say, I am fulfilled, just like I am right now. I am Raymond Ong, licensed professional teacher. Thank you everyone for listening. And this presentation is dedicated to my teachers and of course my parents who are no longer with us. Thank you everyone. That ends my presentation. I hope you learned something. Such an inspiring talk, Mr. Raymond. You have mentioned the importance of recognition, not only of one's awards and medals, but the efforts and stories behind them. We can be fast and still aim to be faster. Moreover, we must not only equip ourselves with valuable skills and massive dreams, but also find reinforcements sorry, to make our dreams a reality. And lastly, to celebrate our wins with people who matter. For our next speaker, he will be introduced by Ms. Ruhama Alterado. Hello. Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce to you our next speaker, an alumni of Changhai Tech College who studied Bachelor of Science in Commerce major in Computer Data Management. An achiever who worked with San Miguel Corporation Philippines as a business intelligence consultant who pioneered, designed, and delivered data warehousing solutions. He was also able to become part of the business intelligence team lead that trains and implements SAP systems, integrating SD, MM, FI, TP, MM modules. Not only in San Miguel Corporation Philippines did he become a business intelligence team lead, but also in Sony Singapore. You might think that, wow, he has achieved so much already. But his achievements did not just stop there. For in 2008, he worked for Vesta Singapore and earned the position of Global Service Delivery Lead in Business Intelligence. And later on in 2011, he was already working with a General Electric company, C Containers Limited, in Singapore as the lead of Business Intelligence and Data Management. Moving forward to 2012, he became the AVP of Business Intelligence in the Analytics Lead Group IT in Media Corp. Singapore. Finally, in 2013, up till the present year, he has been with Semcorp Industries, helping it to reach its maximum potential in the market. That sure is a lot of information to process, so let me break it down. 2013 till 2018, he worked as the head of business intelligence of the company. 2018 till 2021, he became the assistant vice president in data science. And in 2021 till the present, 
he is the head of digital in financing all IT digital systems for Singapore and Southeast Asia region. But of course, we can forget about his completed executive programs, what, one of which is the program leading effective decision making held in Yale School of Management during the months of October to December 2021. Another is the innovation in the age of disruption held in NCR during the months of May to July 2020. With all that is said, we can already tell how he is one outcome-driven and accomplished individual with 22 years of extensive experience in digital solutions and technology innovation. This includes in being in charge of digital leadership, digital strategy, capability development, and applications modernization programs in past and present organizations. Now, that's enough wondering about this amazing individual. So allow me to formally introduce him to all of you. Please, please give a warm welcome to Mr. Jonathan Ma. Uh, thank you uh, yeah, for, for the warm introduction. You can hear me, right? Okay, I will start. Okay. My, my PowerPoint will come on the latter part of my presentation, but uh, maybe I'll just give you a quick introduction uh, about myself on a more personal level. By, by, by the way, to all the officers and members of the faculty, to all the senior high graduates and students, to everyone in this uh, Zoom call, good morning. Again, allow me to introduce myself on a more personal level. I'm Jonathan, deeply rooted from my humble beginnings in the Philippines educated and trained from Chiang Kai-shek College, a school with strong Chinese ideals. Living in Singapore for 18 years now, and together with my family, wife, and two daughters, and a toy poodle dog, we found our second home here. I am a graduate of Chiang Kai-shek College High School Batch 1996, Section 4. I am also a graduate of Chiang Kai shek College, Faculty of Business Arts and Sciences, College Watch 2000. And with emphasis, I am very proud of that. Regarding my career, I'm currently based in Singapore, working in an integrated energy utility and urban development company. We operate and run power plants in different parts of the world. We are into renewables and sustainability business, specializing in solar, wind, and battery storage operations and technology. We are also into water business as well as urban land development. Basically, it is like a Meralco, Mainilad, and Ayala land and many others combined together but with much bigger scale and operating globally. As mentioned in the introduction earlier, I have been in the company for nine years. I studied IT, Bachelor of Science in Commerce major in Computer Data Management in Chiang Kai-shek College. And I'm still in the field of IT today. Now the IT word has evolved into digital. So now we call it digital. I head up digital team for Singapore and Southeast Asia region in my organization, basically in charge of the digital leadership, strategy, solutions development, applications, modernization, all within my area and my purview, which is Singapore and Southeast Asia. My humble beginnings, reaching to where I am right now is no easy fit. When I was your age, I had to study hard and work harder. I wasn't born with a silver spoon, hence the effort had to be doubled. I also seek help from the people around me during my early days, friends and families. Really grateful and thankful for them. By the way, I'm not the brightest in the class. I'm, I'm part of the ordinary ones during those days. I graduated in 1996 in high school, continued in college till year 2000, before I landed my first job in that same year, year 2000. 
My first job was in San Miguel Corporation as an IT application specialist. Worked there for four years before I moved to Singapore in 2004, where I braved myself to the challenges of the unknowns, cultural diversity, and different ways of living. The rest is history. And here I am right now, happy to do what I do best. My talk today is about life navigation. The world is a journey. How do you focus navigating your paths to achieve success? How do you deal with bumps and roadblocks to arrive at your destination? Preparation starts now. I hope you can pick up something in my sharing today. Okay, then I will be opening up and sharing my PowerPoint. Okay, one second. You can see my screen, right? Okay, great. Yes. Okay. To all the upcoming senior high graduates of Chiang Kai-shek College, I only want you to remember one word in my talk today. Focus. F-O-C-U-S. Focus. Okay. First, F stands for friendships. I think this is the most important advice I can give you all. As you partake your own paths right after your senior high, it is important to treasure friendships you have developed in school. If you can be with your friends in college or universities, why not? It can be an advantage, especially for Okay, introverts like me. You can immediately establish a sense of belongingness when you see something familiar around you in your new environment. Personally, I have developed so many friends after I graduated from college. A job, communities, connections, but I would still go back to the same friends from school days during the most important events in my life, whether good or bad. My best sets of friends are still those whom have known me from my humble beginnings. Good that the social media has made our world smaller. So despite being away for 18 years, we still keep in touch. So basically my advice here is that you should develop and tre treasure friendships, have a sense of belongingness to them as friends will help shape the fundamentals in you, physical body, emotions, relationships, time, finances, spirituality, and career. So that is for the F. Next, O. O for opportunity. Once you get out of senior high, every single experience is an opportunity to learn and grow. Make them count. Both good and bad. It will help shape you to become what you want to be in the future. My first job uh, in the Philippines uh, was a springboard for me. I used that to hone my skills, uh, sharpen it until I was given the opportunity to try out and work overseas. And I seized that opportunity and I'm glad I did that. Now I head up the digital team in one of the biggest Singapore-based companies. We deal with different IT applications and solutions, robotics, data analytics, visualization, transformation, blockchain, data science, AI. You name it, we have it. So my advice here is to get up. Do not be lazy. Once you see an opportunity, grab it, learn, and grow with it. That is for the O. Next, for C, comfort zone. Do not be afraid. 
I always believe that anything that scares you or give you butterflies in your bellies, it's definitely worth it. Say yes to the things that scares you the most. Venturing outside your comfort zones, getting into the unknowns, and slowly discovering it is an experience you will never regret because that is where you can learn most. So my advice here, students, the graduates, do not be afraid to take risk. Risk can be rewarding as well. Next, letter U, okay? U turn. Take a U turn when needed. Life is not always positive. Just remember that. Failure is always bound to happen. And when that happens, you can always do a course correction or take U-turn. Nothing wrong with that. You can change your mind. You can make changes. You can make a U-turn in some of your decisions in life. There is this saying that failure doesn't mean you are a failure. It just means you haven't succeeded yet. Failure can sharpen you and make you better in life. So that is for the you. Now, for the letter S, focus, right? F-O-C-U-S. This is the fifth, fifth part, staying relevant. Nurture your minds with the right thoughts. Continue to evolve. Do not stop learning and always stay relevant. Imagine, imagination will bring you to the world that never existed. Learn, relearn, and innovate. Not just when you are in college or universities. Continue to innovate even when you're you know, in work, in business, or in anything. My advice here is to take that as a challenge, to really stretch yourselves, students. Discover your inner strengths and maximize your potential in whatever you do. And I hope maybe I can see a future Elon Musk or Mark Zuckerberg in the participants today. Why not, right? If you can dream, then dream big. And finally, the road out there is yours to conquer. There will definitely be cracks and bumps. Some roads may be slippery at times, especially during stormy conditions. But as long as you stay focused and just continue to cruise it, see the sights and sounds, and enjoy the view along the way, okay? True focus, developing friendships during your ride, seizing every opportunity that you will encounter along the way, take risks and get out of your comfort zones, take U-turns when you fail and restart, continue to learn, innovate, and stay relevant. If you remember to focus, I think you will be okay. Just remember that. For all senior high graduates, explore and see the world. It may not be as ideal as the pre-COVID situation, but there will always be ways to make things work. And it can be great. I think that, that's it for my sharing. Thank you and have a good day to everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Na. Life navigation, socially, academically, and internally is different for everyone, and that's okay. The time when we have to depart from our second home, CKS College, is near, and that's also okay. The relationships we built here will always be within us and can even be foundations of greater opportunities ahead. Like you said, Mr. Nang, to risk 
need to be tried, U-turns taken. No matter how confusing life can be, we must not lose our focal point. May we have Mr. Iron Cheng to introduce our fourth speaker. Next, we are honored to be joined by our fourth speaker for today's webinar. After finishing high school at Chiang Kai-shek College back in 2005, he finished his senior high studies at Chengshou University in Taiwan. He went on to study major in marketing at the National Kaohsiung University. Later, he attended grad school at the National Chengchi University and attained a degree in Master of Business Administration. Our speaker is a marketing professional and currently senior brand manager for Heineken China, a top global alcohol company based in Shanghai. His past experiences in other companies include Louis Vuitton, Procter & Gamble, and L'Oreal. He had also worked across four countries as part of his chosen career path, the Philippines, Taiwan, China, and Laos. Now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please join me in welcoming Mr. Gregory Lim. Hey, guys. Uh, Greg here. Can you guys hear me? I just need a quick confirmation. Um, or is everyone out on lunch break? Is a <laughs> hello? Okay, I guess. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Thanks. We're Thanks, Marvin. Here. Um, so yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Aaron uh, for the wonderful uh, introduction. Um, second of all, I want to greet everyone a happy Chinese New Year. Xinian Kuai Le, as you guys know from my background, I live in Shanghai. So um, yeah, uh, Xinian Kuai Le, and you guys, if you guys haven't received your home files yet from your parents, your grandparents, you know, make sure to to get those money and save them because you're gonna be it's gonna be useful in the coming years, especially if you guys are graduating. So um, um, today I'll be talking about a little, uh, some, of course, about myself, uh, what I do, who I was in Shanghai Shek, and of course. Um, some life lessons that have, that has helped me along the way. Um, but before I start, I really want to thank uh, my alma mater, Chiang Kai-shek. I also want to thank, thank uh, uh, not only my teachers back in the past, but to everyone, the organizers and the students who have helped this uh, talk. Um, and of course, the fellow speakers, because today, uh, if you guys can see, I'm also taking notes. I was learning a lot from the other speakers and all of them are very, uh, um, very successful. And of course, I want to be like them as well, like you guys. So um, when I was, uh, when I was 16, I graduated from Chiang Kai-shek and I also had a career talk. And I was, of course, the audience, just like you guys. And to be honest, I was very lost that time. But that career talk helped me and shaped me um, along the way. And one of the speakers actually was Aya Raymond, uh, who, who was the second speaker today. Um, just a little bit about me and who I was in Chiang Kai-shek. I was never the, the brainy one. I was never in star section, but I was into sports. I was into extracurricular activities. I was very active in the Filipino club, acting club, um, being a lot in school plays. Uh, just in short, uh, you know, um, I, uh, I'm never afraid. I'm never embarrassed about uh, big moments and, and the stage or whatnot. And um, yeah, so I will start now. I will share my screen. Please let me know if you guys can uh, see it. Oh, yeah. Give me a second. Huh? I don't think you guys can see my face, but you guys can see the patient. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yes, All right, sir. perfect, perfect. So yeah, uh, I'm Greg, like I said. Um, just a quick fact, by the way, I uh, was born and I grew up in the streets of Masangkai. So it's, uh, it's near uh, Padre Alge, right? So I uh, basically, just like you guys, I don't know if you guys still live in Binondo, you guys live um, in other areas right now, but I was a Masangkai boy. And if you guys don't know Masangkai, that is the street where all the fast food joints are. Um, and actually, a few weeks ago, I, I heard that uh, Jollibee Masangkai closed down and it saddened me a little bit because there were a lot of uh, memories from there. But enough of food. 
I will talk about uh, because it's lunchtime. I know you guys might be hungry, but I'll, I'll just be I'll just quickly share about what I do and uh, my some life advices and some career advices. So I am a senior brand manager um, for one of the biggest global alcohol companies in the world. I don't want to market the, the brand so much or I don't want to tell you guys about it too much because uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys are still underage and you know you can only start drinking when you're 18 or when you're 21 in the US. Um, I'm currently in China. Um, I've been living and working here for two years. I've also lived in Taiwan. Um, for 10 years. I've also lived in uh, Laos for almost a year. So these are um, where the territories I've worked in before. So Taiwan, China, Philippines, and Laos. And um, what I do for a living is I build brands and create experiences for a global beer company. So what do I do for a living? What does a brand marketeer do? I'm sure you guys have a lot of thoughts in mind or maybe not, but I would like to uh, show it through this way. Mm, give me a second. Okay. My okay. So this is what my friends think I do. My friends think that I uh, drink every night and party with uh, a lot of cool people. Another thing is this is what my parents think I do. My parents think um, I only work and I only drink so that uh, I can get promoted. And this is what society thinks I do. Um, they think that I'm a big uh, fat uh, with beer belly guy that just drinks every day because I work in, a, in an alcohol company, especially in marketing. Um, but all these three are actually not, well, except for the first one, which I'll talk about later on. I don't drink as much. As you can see, I, I believe I'm still fit right now. I'm, I just turned 33, I don't have a beer belly. And that's of course, uh, to the help of uh, discipline and exercise. But um, I don't drink as much because uh, I enjoy uh, uh, just being in the moment and not being too drunk, if that makes any sense. But what my friends think I do, they think I party with a lot of cool people. I don't just party with a lot of cool people, I also work with a lot of cool people and famous people, if I can say. And later I'll, I'll discuss that a little bit on. But some of the some of the Filipino celebrities I've worked with would be uh, like James Street, Nadine, uh, the Pressman sisters, and the others, of course. Okay, now what I really do in marketing, these are the three things, and um, pretty much there's a, it's, a, it's a broad spectrum actually, but this is what I really do. I create TV ads, TV commercials communication materials. Um, you can see posters, you can see billboards, and of course, promos like, you know, buy two, get one, or buy two, get something. That's one of the uh, uh, scope that I do. Number two, I uh, introduce uh, new products. So new flavors and different kinds of packaging. Uh, for example, it's CNY, maybe we'll create a CNY packaging. A lot of creativity and a lot of uh, brainstorming goes into that, and of course, research. And the third one is I create uh, world-class events via music and sports platforms. As you can see, there's a photo of um, a concert or a, a festival, as you can say, and I've met um, pretty cool artists, DJs I've been in. I've met a lot of uh, cool sports players as well um, in the past. And that's, um, that's uh, one thing I, I would never forget, obviously. So this is what I really do, right, in marketing. And um, so, for the next few slides, what I wanna share with you guys is just um, how I got here, the stories um, of, uh, and, and of course the hardship of how I got to where I am as a senior brand manager right now. And I would like to share that um, by using slogans. If you guys know slogans, these are marketing um, lines that make people remember um, about brands. So I will be sharing three to four slogans that are very, um, important for me and it has helped me along the way so first my favorite slogan of all time by nike and um, just do it this is uh what i want you guys to remember about just do it is of course a lot of things you guys are all from different walks of life you guys could be in high school at least you guys oh sorry you guys could be athletes um you guys could be um 
math um, geniuses, or you guys could be average students just like me before. And how, how just do it, these three words have, have, have helped me along the, the, the way. So when I was graduating um, at 16, when I, when, I was graduated, when I graduated at 16 years old from Chiang Kai-shek, to be honest, I was very lost. That's what I said. Most of my friends were going to a prestigious university like USD, La Salle, UP, Ateneo, and of course, Chiang Kai-shek College. So they know what they were going to do. I didn't. I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, and at the same time, I saw a lot of my peers, a lot of my classmates, they also moved abroad. Some of them moved to the US, some of them moved to Singapore, um, some of them uh, moved to Europe as well. And I was stuck um, at 16. I didn't know what I was, uh, I didn't know what, what I was gonna do. But I know I had uh, one skill or one characteristic. It's like I said a while ago, I'm uh, I'm fearless. I'm not afraid of rejections. I'm not afraid of embarrassments and all that. And so, um, I kept asking around, uh, basically, what should I do? Are these things the right ones? Uh, I asked uh, not only professors, teachers, and also um, seniors can give me life advice. And they gave me a lot. Some of them told me, oh, you have to be an engineer. You have to be a nurse. You have to be this, you have to be that. But in my mind, I didn't want to be like those, uh, at least for me. Uh, I didn't want to be in medical. I didn't want to be in engineering. It, it was not who I am. But there was one thing I wanted to do at that time. And um, I, wanted, I wanted to experience something different from the, from the Masankai that I, that I live in. Uh, I wanted to uh, experience um, life abroad. So I talked to my sister and I talked to my aunt. And my sister, I was very lucky because her, uh, she works in a, in a senior high school and university. So her school actually had a scholarship program for um, um, upcoming graduates. And like I said a while ago, I wasn't a great student, but how did I get that scholarship program? Of course, like I said, through my kapal mukha again. Number one, there was an interview. Obviously, I aced the interview. Maybe I can, you know, I, uh, I, I, I know how to present myself. That's number one. Number two, um, back in high school, one of my favorite um, 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 subjects were English. And so I, I had really good English exams, English aptitude tests, and that's how I got not only the scholarship, but the acceptance to that school. So I moved to Taiwan when I was 17. Um, I didn't know that time my Mandarin wasn't the best as well. Um, I only, I'm only pretty good at memorizing like Biakdiam or Sidiam, just like you said. But when I moved to Taiwan and it was very scary because um, like I said, um, I, was, I also said a while ago, I wasn't from a well-off family. So when I decided to move to Taiwan, my dad and my mom said, okay, if you move, then we're gonna have to cut you off. Um, no money is gonna come in from us to support yourself. You have to support yourself on your own. So when I moved to Taiwan, I became a self-supporting student. I became a working student, full-time student, and also working um, after uh, uh, school hours. So I had two part-time jobs working six to seven days a week from 17 and senior high school all the way to university, then to my MBA days, which is a master's in business administration. And I graduated at 27 years old. Uh, you guys might wonder, wow, 27, that's pretty old to start your, uh, to start your uh, career. And I'm not even a doctor or a lawyer or whatnot, but because I had to work myself, uh, I had to work for myself. I had to, um, I had different kinds of career, uh, major switches um, I moved to universities and um, that's why I graduated late but of course um, along those years it taught me a lot and in all those 10 years I lived in Taiwan and because I had to work I um, and I had to make money for myself I basically took up many diff uh, a lot of different jobs from being an English teacher to a guitar teacher to translators, uh, to being a teaching assistant, to even being a singer in, uh, in a restaurant uh, and, and, um, and um, um, some small pubs and clubs, as well as being in sales and marketing. So these, this is what I did, what I've done for 10 years. And all these uh, jobs, right? To be honest, at first, I didn't know 
what to do. But in the back of my mind, I only had three words um, telling me what to do, which is just do it. You have nothing to lose. So I did my homework. English teacher, I went to Google how to be an English teacher. Okay, this might be the, the worst advice because there's a lot of teachers out there that can act that are actually more professional and more more uh, it's tougher. It's tough to get a lot of those degrees and whatnot. But then for me in Taiwan, I was able to find a niche which is uh, English speaking, how to speak English better, and um, with uh, with uh, young students and whatnot. And of course, yada yada with other kinds of jobs. Um, I was afraid at first, but in the back of my head, just do it. So if people ask me, so are you a marketeer? Yes, I am. I've been, I've been in marketing for six years, but I've also teach English. Uh, I've also taught English uh, for uh, ten, over 10 years. And um, like I said, I've worked for 10 years and the companies I've worked for before would be L'Oreal, Louis Vuitton and Procter & Gamble. And now I'm currently in a uh, European uh, alcohol company. So before this, uh, before I end this, just do it part. Um, you guys are graduating soon, and um, if you guys don't know what to do yet, it doesn't matter. Just try as much as you can. Be open to a lot of uh, new things because in the end, you got nothing to lose. You're young. The things that you can learn along the way would be, oh, this is these are the things that I like, and these are the things that I don't like. So don't forget. If, you, if ever you have doubts if, or if ever you're afraid, this, is this the right path for me? For me, my advice to you guys would be to just do it. Next, the second slogan that I would like to uh, share with everybody that I love the most would be think different. So think different is a slogan by Apple. And um, you guys know Apple is such an innovative company. And the reason why they are very innovative is because they think differently compared to other brands. They don't have to be the fastest or they, they don't have to have the best functions, but they're the ones they celebrate, um, you know, the, the originals, the innovators and the, the, the original thinkers, if I may say. And in Apple, think different, thinking different is very important. And just like in life. Uh, I'm not sure about you guys, but when I was graduating from high school, I saw so many people uh, a lot of my classmates, they knew what they were going to do. What most of my peers study, studied was medical field, which is great. Um, you save a lot of people. You make a lot of money. Uh, it's tough, obviously. Engineering, again, it's tough. It brings you to places. There's a lot of math involved and whatnot. And these are what most of my peers study. And everyone was going through here. Oh, I want to be a doctor. I want to be in nursing. I want to be in engineering. And for me, I didn't know um, what to do. So I, at first, I took up engineering first. I took up engineering for two years and then I realized this was not for me. A lot of people might, may, might say, oh, it's, it's too late. You have to push through it. But in order to be flexible, I told myself, oh, it doesn't matter. I just have to do it. And I just have to think different. And I went back to, to, to basically looking at the major list, the course list, and what are the, the majors that, I really, that, I re, that have really interested me. And that time it was really marketing. Um, that time my dad, my mom, actually my dad uh, didn't really want me to study marketing. He said, it's, a, it's a, an easy um, um, profession. You can use it by intuition and whatnot, but I disagree with that. And I pushed through. I switched majors and studied marketing. And being a marketeer, it taught me more about um, what I really wanted in life, which is creating TV ads, um, communicating what, or building brands and building experiences. And if I were not, uh, if I followed everyone's um, pursuit that time into going into medical field and engineering and didn't think different, then I might have not uh, found the love uh, uh, a love for marketing. So don't forget um, to think different and always challenge um, not just the status quo, but challenge your thoughts as, as well. Because in, or, because in the end of the day, you're going to live your life on your own and you're going to have your own career. So don't follow what everyone's saying until you decide that it's something that you really want to do. So don't forget to think different. And the last slogan I want to share with everybody is a slogan by Pepsi, which is for the love of it. 
Um, I, a few speakers a while ago mentioned this, and this is uh, true to this day. I'm also that type of person. If I don't love what I do, I just cannot excel in it. I cannot um, show my passion and I cannot spend hours on doing it and whatnot. Because to be honest, guys, work is tough and it's a gr daily grind every day. But if you love what you do, then you wouldn't be working at all. You wouldn't feel like you're working at all. And I'm so glad that I'm able to find what I love doing, especially marketing, but it took a while. Like I said, I graduated at 27 and started working, but I think because of my love and my commitment, uh, after just short of six years, I am handling one of the biggest markets of my company. And to be honest, I'm, uh, I wouldn't be able to do that without the discipline, commitment, and of course, for the love of uh, what I do in marketing. And this is a story that, uh, this is a photo that I want to share with everyone of for the love of it. This was a photo that I was uh, sick, actually. This was uh, one of the sales presentations um, in the past, uh, 2019, actually. And I presented our plans, our marketing plans to, um, to 600 people. Um, and I was on stage, obviously, and the partners were there. Um, distributors were there. Salespeople were there. Basically, the whole company, as well as the people um, that are sitting on the board. And um, actually, even uh, um, the son of Lucio Tan, Michael Tan, was also there. And it was a very long presentation. But, uh, and also, I was sick at that time. But because I love what I do, and I really have a passion for it, I pushed through it. And the presentation obviously uh, went pretty well. But this is only possible because I love what I do. So you have to find what you love. So try as much as you can. If you, uh, and, and uh, just three things I would like to share with you again, just for a recap. If you don't know what to do, just do it. And then you will figure out what you like and what you don't like. Second one would be think different. Don't follow um, you know, the status quo. Don't, follow, don't listen to, um, don't listen to, um, or use advice as reference. Um, don't follow blindly, if uh, that's the correct way of saying it, and have uh, be able to think differently and think independently for yourself. And the third one is to find what you love because you're going to have to do it the rest of your life. And before I end, I would like to share one more slogan. It's one of uh, the brands that I love, the, I pretty much uh, are, is into right now, of course, um, Netflix. So Netflix, as you guys know, uh, is a streaming company and their slogan is see what's next but before I end this presentation I would like to share with you guys it's actually not see what's next but what is next for you guys because I'm super excited and I hope you guys are you might be lost you might be uh, a little bit afraid as well but don't forget that as long as you have the just do it think different and for the love of it you guys are going to be okay and whatever's next, don't forget to enjoy. And I know I want to cut my uh, presentation short because there's two more speakers. But um, if there's uh, anything you guys want to know about marketing or life in Shanghai or in Taiwan or whatnot, feel free to hit me up at my Instagram account at Greg Lim 8. Peace. Thank you guys so much. Here's to such a wonderful talk, Mr. Gregory Lim. Mr. Lim has shared what his friends, family, and even society think he does in relation to his job. Yet we saw that their idea is nowhere near the job he performs. The lesson I got from that comparison of perspectives is that the only person who can truly know what one is doing, thinking, and feeling is oneself. And having courage is being fine with that. Another point is having that kapal ng mukha factor, as mentioned by Mr. Gregory Lim, to be confident in presenting oneself, which can be honed by knowing exactly one's strengths and weaknesses and using them to one's advantage. 
what's next can be beautiful or terrifying for what we know. But we just need to continue and think differently to find what we truly love. To introduce our fifth speaker, let us call Ms. Yasmin Kai. Good morning, everyone. Let me introduce our next speaker, Ms. Rachel Chua. Ms. Rachel Chua graduated as a youth choir president and a consistent star section honor student from Chiang Kai-shek College, Batch 2008. That's she completed true. her bachelor's degree in marketing management from De La Salle University, Manila, with a cum laude title while receiving academic achiever and Jose Rizal awards. Before graduating university, she was chosen as the first and only Lasallian to join fast retailing Uniqlo Global Management Program in Tokyo, Japan. From then on, Ms. Rachel had started her overseas career in fashion retail before relocating with her husband to Shanghai, China, where they currently live. Ms. Rachel is a multilingual key account manager at a healthcare company and a Girl Gone International Volunteer Manager Prior to moving abroad, she has participated in internships, competitions, and activities from Unilever, HSBC, L'Oreal, Colgate Palmolive, British Council, Aboitis, Department of Tourism, Rotaract Chinatown, and many more. Some of Miss Rachel's hobbies include yoga, boxing, pole fitness, reading, eating out. Let us welcome Miss Rachel Chua. Hello, everyone. So first of all, thank you very much for the um, introduction that you have provided. And I'm happy to and honored to be invited uh, by, of course, my alma mater to speak for the career talk today. And of course, aside from the familiar faces that the, the other speakers have mentioned, like, for example, um, Mr. Raymond Ong, I remember he was also one of our substitute teacher, math teacher before, and he was one of the terrors. And I remember like uh, every time we have like uh, exams from him. It was really difficult math question. And I also saw in the screen, uh, Mrs. Brenda Ong. So she was actually my brother and also my English teacher at that time. And I think uh, Mrs. Uh, Ong will also know that my English before was not good. I will explain later how I actually got into the mar into marketing course. And uh, the speaker before Greg Lim. So Mr. Greg Lim, actually, we both live in uh, Shanghai, China. So I also met him here, but uh, I was also happy to have met him here because he was also an alma mater and some of my friends and cousins and relatives also know him. And uh, yeah, so I'll start uh, my PPT as well in a while. I'll just uh, briefly introduce myself again. So I'm Rachel Chua, batch 2008. And uh, I've lived in uh, Tokyo, Japan ever since I, after I graduated from uh, university. So it was from 2012 to 2015, I stayed there for three years. And uh, after three years, I've moved to, to Shanghai, China, where I currently live now. And I've been living here for around uh, seven years. And uh, yeah, so far, uh, I'm still enjoying my time here in uh, Shanghai. And now I will just start my PPT. So my PPT is not actually as uh, good as the previous speakers because mainly I put a lot of pictures for also to you to see um, more visual. And uh, yeah, I hope so you can listen at the same time as well as looking at the pictures. So I'm just gonna share my screen now. Share. Yeah, so see even, I'm just to check, uh, can you see the, the PPT or the PDF that I've shared now? Okay. Yeah, so as you can see, I've even missed the part wherein it should be the first page or the introduction. So just to be clear, like as a marketer, this is not usually how I make the PowerPoint presentation. So usually it should be more formal. Just now I put a lot of pictures. So some of the, most of the pictures actually are from my Facebook account and the others that I couldn't find anymore, probably they were stuck in Friendster or in some uh, USB. I'm, of course, I think that uh, now you don't know Friendster anymore, but before, during uh, my generation, during I, I was like teenager or in university, it was Friendster before Facebook. So most of my photos when I was younger were actually in Friendster and probably I put it in some USB. So here I'll start uh, first uh, with my first career experience. It's actually in Tokyo, Japan. So as I've mentioned, 
in the introduction. So after graduating from university, I was lucky to be invited by fast retailing Japan or Uniqlo. So Uniqlo is actually under fast retailing. So fast retailing is a group of companies. It's more focused in fashion or retail. So it was a global management candidate program, which means that they uh, invited different uh, um, graduating students from different parts of the country. So I remember at that time, 2012, there was no Uniqlo yet in Philippines. And I think now there are already a lot of Uniqlo in the Philippines. So at that time they were expanding and they've uh, also asked the students from different uh, countries to join. And in the Philippines, so I was in the fifth batch of the global management program. So at that time, they opened it to students from UP, Ateneo, and uh, no, actually only UP and Ateneo. And at that time, on that year, 2012, they opened it to La Salle as well. And uh, I was lucky to be the first and only La Salian to be accepted in this program. So looking at this picture, you will see that, uh, yeah, I've met a lot of different uh, people from different countries and also, here you can also see on the top right corner, this is uh, the batch from the Philippines and one Indian, one from India. So the batch from Philippines, so they are also from the other universities. So for this one, it was actually a rigorous process. So people may think that, oh, it's so lucky you just uh, got in and the opportunity was right. But actually for this one, we went through around uh, a lot of steps, nine interviews. And uh, we went uh, one week to Japan to do another set of interviews and uh, a lot of uh, assessment before they choose the participants. So which means that even if they sent to you to send us to Japan for one week, they still made the cutoff. So some were accepted and a lot were also not accepted. So yeah, so that was uh, 2012 to 2015. I was in Tokyo, Japan. I will explain the others later. And then the next one. So now, Shanghai to China, so 2015 to present. So for this one, actually, I moved the industry. So before, I was mainly in fashion or retail. And after I've met my husband now, I have met uh, my husband before in Tokyo and we moved to Shanghai, I've actually changed industry. So now I'm in the healthcare industry. So people may think, whoa, that's a big change. It's from fashion or retail to healthcare. I will also explain later what the, made me the big change for this one, but it's still in marketing. So here you can see, I enjoy going out with a lot of different events. So one here is uh, I was able to be on an event as well, assisting the NBA games here in the Shanghai, China. And the others are awards from uh, like uh, magazines from Shanghai as well. And the others are just a, uh, people from my team. So you can see that uh, I work with also people from different background and also different uh, age range. So it's like this. And then, yeah, the next one is about life, personally about my life. So my family, they're on the top most and uh, you can see my husband there and I have two cute dogs. So the two dogs are actually adopted. We adopted them in Shanghai. And uh, yeah, on my leisure time, I want to do yoga and the others are uh, hanging out with my friends. So that is more about my life now. So I really enjoy uh, more like a work-life balance. Now it's not focused too much on my career also because sometimes your priorities will change over time and that's okay. So now going back after a, a brief introduction of my chapters of my lives, I'm going to being a Sikation. So I'm not sure if it's called Sikation or Shekyan or Chankanian, <laughs> but I think like a yeah, Sikation is safe and you will see go fight blue and white because I was actually a big fan of our basketball or varsity team when I was in high school, especially with my dad. I usually watch with my dad's cousin and my brother who never almost miss any game of uh, basketball. And I think Sir Jude will also know that. Yeah, so being a Sikation, so what I like, or I am proud most about being a Sikation. So first is the Chinese language advantage. So uh, there are a lot of, uh, or other different Chinese schools in the Manila, but I am really proud to be 
And also I'm thankful that my parents sent me to Chiang Kai-shek College. Why? Because even when you go out there in the Filipino Chinese community, we are actually Chiang Kai-shek College students are actually known to be good in Chinese. And look at the, the speaker a while ago, Mr. Raymond Ong too, how he also mentioned that uh, he has never been to other countries or learned the Chinese in other countries, but he has learned it in school, which is true. When you go out and talk to other Chinese Filipino students from other schools, you will realize that your intonation, your Chinese intonation is really good and you can speak better Chinese compared to other Chinese Filipinos. That's what I actually noticed. They say that your Chinese, uh, Chiang Kai-shek College students, uh, Chinese uh, pronunciation and intonation are really good. And next one is we are famous to be good in math. I am still saying we because I always, uh, I will always be part of Chiang Kai. So that's why I say we are good in math, Chinese and extracurricular activities. So Chiang Kai-shek College is actually well known for its math, especially. So for me, I was in star section and uh, you know, in star section before they always make a cut. So you are section five first year, but they cut some students to be able to go to section five again on the second year. And they cut again until third year and fourth year, they, they stopped the cut. So the pressure was really high and the math that we had at that time was uh, really difficult. I remembered a lot of times wherein I, I cried a lot. <laughs> Like I was really crying, like uh, just because of the, you know, like when I think also the, not the pressure, but because I want to be good at it. And it's really good training that we, about the math. I mean, good tr math training that we have in uh, our school, which I am really thankful until now. And for the Chinese, most of the Chinese teachers before, they don't really speak to you even in Hokkien. So I was like being like, okay, forced, to speak uh, Mandarin to Chinese teachers. And I was always wondering why they always reply back in Mandarin when I even already trying to talk to them in uh, Filipino or in Tagalog or in uh, Hokkien. But this one, you should actually take advantage of it because it's only when you speak more or listen to Chinese or Mandarin more that you will be able to really learn. It's the same with English. I remember when the Miss, uh, Miss Brenda, Brenda Ong's class too, she always encourages us to speak English, but for me at that time, I'm like saying, oh, it's not natural. Like I still want to speak English, but she was one of the teachers who actually um, make you feel that it's okay to make mistakes, but you need to try. You just need to try to keep speaking English. So it's actually tr true for the language and even for the math, you need to keep trying. Otherwise uh, it will not come to you naturally or otherwise you will not improve. And the same for the extracurricular activities, as uh, mentioned in my introduction, I was part of the youth choir. So we do a lot of different performances uh, in the school or outside school with the Chinese Filipino community. And uh, actually for that too, Chiang Kai is also well known for being good in uh, sports like the Tionglian basketball, for the choir, for Chinese dance, for folk dance, for cheerleading or any other things we are also well known for, for the extracurricular. I think just uh, last year Olympics, we also had an alumnus from Chiang Kai-shek College who, who joined the Olympics. And I was even watching and I like, telling everyone like, oh my God, he's from Chiang Kai-shek College. He's an alumnus and uh, my sister knows her because he was, I think the alumnus Olympic was younger. So I didn't personally know her, but my sister know her. So it's a good connection. So that's why I'm saying that uh, it is really um, good balance for of academic and extracurricular that they provide in the, our school. And yeah, the next one is active in Chinese Filipino community, as I've mentioned, and the broad network and connection that uh, the Chinese Filipino, um, that you can have within the Chinese Filipino community just by saying that you are from CKSC or just by saying that you are alumnus or you're studying at CKSC, they will know that. I, it's almost impossible to tell a Chinese Filipino you're from Chiang Kai-shek College and then they will not know. It's always, they know that. And of course, the opportunities and support system, like uh, I've mentioned, the support system from the teacher, some of the teachers, actually one of the teachers, Mr. Datu On, um, he even went to my wedding. So, and when I was having like some difficulties uh, during my time in Japan, because in Japan, they really 
work long hours and work harder. A workaholic, the, the, the work culture was really tough. So sometimes I even uh, seek advice from uh, Mr. Datuan at that time, like in other teachers that I had in the university or high school just to get some advice. So it's the support system that is really, we are lucky to have. And the next one is the school name. As I mentioned, it's a, uh, the name is Chinese Chiang Kai-shek College. So not only inside the, in, in Philippines that it's actually well known. So when I went to Japan and then I went to China, because I tell them I, I, I studied Chinese uh, or high school in Chiang Kai-shek College, they will immediately think that, oh, okay, so you, you speak Chinese or you have a Chinese background. So the name of the school already actually saved us from explaining a lot more that, uh, that yeah, I, I learned Chinese and I can speak Chinese. So yeah, so this is about being Cicatian. And next I will show you some of the pictures before. So this was me in high school. So probably I was even younger than you all at that picture when I was graduating. So it was 20, 2008. And the other parts are actually, yeah, my classmates. And until now, I am really still in touch with them. They are really one of my close friends until now. So some of them have become doctor or good in finance, banker or managing their own family business. But we still uh, keep in touch. Even during the COVID times, I even seek advice from the, for, about the COVID from the doctors. And this is the volleyball team. And then this one, I will actually show you that even when I graduated uh, after university, so I graduated cum laude, and then uh, you can see here at ckse.edu.ph, the Chiang Kai-shek College, my alma mater, even supported by creating an article for me at that time, and I was really thankful for that. So you will really see the support system. So it's not like after you graduated, you forget about Chiang Kai-shek College. It's not like that. So it's still, a, it's still part of you. And that one, I think that was a wrong picture for the Chinese newspaper because that was for my aunt, but... Um, Actually, Chiang Kai also um, printed a newspaper article when I graduated, after I graduated from university, which I think is uh, really supportive of them to, to even uh, like put an effort of printing uh, about me on the newspaper. So yeah, it, you can see it's laminated. So next time when you should also do that, anything that you do in the future, you should save all the pictures or laminate them because in the future you will need them. Like perhaps next time if you do a career talk. Okay. So yeah, here you can see us um, for the, uh, what's that, singing as well. So in the Chinese Filipino community, there are a lot of uh, activities happening. And uh, of course, our school always have representatives. So this is, all of us are Chiang Kai from here on the right side of the picture, the one with the pink costume. So we were all from uh, CKSC. And uh, the other one is uh, Chinese Filipino uh, competition, singing competition. But of course, uh, we also have a lot of good representatives from them. I mean, I'm not the best, but uh, the others in the picture are actually from our school as well. So yeah, just to show you some. So now I'm giving some uh, advice already to you. So first, um, you need to define success. So I think, we are asked a lot of times, what do you want to become when you grow old? And, or when you grow up, what do you want to be? Like uh, asked by your teacher, asked by your parents. So when I was a kid, even like, even before high school, I always say, actually, even until high school, I just always say, I want to become successful. Like, then I remember one teacher from, uh, from CKSE, I, I forgot the, I forgot which teacher, because I think I was asked a lot of times. So she said, I know you want to become successful because everyone wants to become successful. No one wants to become unsuccessful, you know, but then you need to define what do you want to become successful at? Like in which uh, industry, in which part of your life, what is success for you? So as early as now, you need to already define or identify what success means to you. So for example, you want, I want to be the best. It's also the same. You want to be the best for what? You want to be the best in which aspect? So that's why you need to find, in order for you to help that, you need to find your key motivating factors and uh, your priority. So for you, success, does it mean that earning more money, like earning a high salary or having time, which means time, what time? Time to also do other stuff, time to have, still hang out with your family, time to travel, time for 
your own personal life. So if you have a work or a career that gives you time to travel or time to do the stuff that you like, then you are successful for yourself. Or the others are, okay, the salary may be lower and there are not much uh, travel opportunities or uh, it's an office work, like uh, you are not uh, working in a lot of different events, meeting people, but the learning opportunities is really good, which means that uh, in this job, will you be able to, to speak more Chinese, like use the, more of your Chinese skill? Like, for example, in my job now, when I moved to China, actually my Chinese was uh, is still okay, but not really good. But then in my current job, for some reason, when they got to know that I'm Chinese Filipino, they always speak to me in Mandarin. And at first I tried to tell them that, uh, ah, you know, my Mandarin is not that good. So I, I prefer to speak in English. But my boss, I think he, she also wants to motivate me. So she just keeps talking to me in Chinese. And if I don't understand, she's gonna explain what it understand, but she constantly talked to me in Chinese for like three years and now my Chinese improved. That's what I love about my work now. It's uh, the learning opportunities as well is good. So yeah, so the others is like other benefits. So it can be, do you want to have a job that uh, provides uh, like a good, uh, I don't know, like a good uh, health insurance or a good travel opportunity or also some benefit that will provide for your parents because some companies, they actually do provide other compensation that can benefit you or your family. So it's that one. You need to define what success for you because success for everyone means different things. So that's the first thing that you need to do. And then the next one, yeah. So these are, I'm just gonna quickly show the photo. So this one, when I was in university, so for me, my definition of success is I want to get a lot of awards. So to get a lot of awards, I need to join a lot of different uh, competitions. So I joined L'Oreal Brandstorm, I joined HSBC uh, Entrepreneurs Award, and I studied hard because I want to get an award. Award is like the Cum Laude too is an award. I joined Colgate, uh, was that Colgate uh, Kumikitang Kabuhayan uh, Livelihood Project. So I seek a lot of different opportunities and you might think that, oh, it's, you know, that the, uh, you're lucky you're able to find this opportunity. How did I actually find these opportunities? I typed on Google, like competitions, uh, 20, like, when was that? 2011, like, or competitions 2012, competitions for the senior uh, students in university. I just typed the keywords, and fortunately, the HSBC and the Colgate uh, showed up, because for this one, even the my school, DLS, you didn't know about this competition. So it's how you actually find your opportunities. You need to find it by yourself or you need to ask from other people. So the next one, I success for me at that time, I want to have recognition and the feeling of being chosen. So that's why I also joined in different uh, leader, leader, I mean, business leader summit. So this one is from Aboitis. The other one are leadership program from La Salle. And this one is also from L'Oreal again. So that, that is the definition of success for me at that time. So I know what, which way and what action plan I need to do or what actions I need to do. And I also want to lead and be surrounded with by like-minded people. That's why I joined a lot of different organizations. You can see here, I joined Anglicom is a Chinese Filipino community in the La Salle. And the Gemma is a marketing organization and the Unilever. So I joined Unilever leadership program. So just to gain a lot of experience. So like what Gregory said a while ago, you need to just do it, just do it, just find the opportunity. Don't think too much. If you don't, you didn't get accepted, it's okay, apply for another one. And uh, if you get accepted then you're lucky. And next one, yeah. So put yourself out there. So put yourself out there means, uh, yeah, to gain more experience. You cannot have a lot of experience or you you won't be able to try a lot of different new things if you just keep yourself in a, in a bubble or like a, if you keep yourself uh, being shy. So why you need to put yourself out there first to gain experience, overcome your fear. Like before I was shy, I don't like presentations. I, I My English was not good. I, re, I was really scared every time I called upon to, to do a, like to ask a, something or to read book because my pronunciation was not good. So it's to overcome fear. You need to keep doing practice more because it's only with, with practice that you get better. And also it's also for you to form habit and uh, you need to go out there to do networking and make connections. So you might ask, okay, how do I do that? So first is uh, 
You need to join extracurricular activities or organizations, be active in communities. So like communities, even online, it's okay. There are also some uh, communities now and you need to take up new hobbies. Before I don't like reading book, but I noticed in high school that most of the, my classmates who were good in English, because for me, like I was okay in math. Like that's, I'm, I'm, I mean, I like math, so I was okay in math, but then I don't like the English. And I noticed that, okay, most of the students or my classmates who are good in English at that time read books. So I, I was like, okay, I need to read more books. So that's a, where the hobby of reading book now come up and uh, volunteer or do part-time. So volunteer, yeah, you can also just do volunteer, I don't like teaching English to, to small kids or, or any other volunteer opportunities that you may have. So here, uh, the example of put yourself out there. So here you will see it's in Japanese. So this was Uniqlo. So it was more like a, a model thing. So even though I wasn't a model, I still like when they ask uh, who wants to, I don't know, like the, be put in the blog, I just said like, oh, I want. <laughs> so, so that was the first time I said, I want. And then the good thing is saying yes to other people is that they give you more opportunities. That's why instead of just one, they gave me three opportunities to be on the blog of Uniqlo. It's not like an official uh, uh, advertisement, but it was still like a, in a big thing that it was part of the website of Uniqlo. So that's how you put yourself out there. You just, you just say yes to once and then another opportunity keep opening, keep opening up. And then uh, for this one, I'm gonna share to you. So you might think, oh, what is this? It's only eating out. But this one, you can say there's written, I love Bon App, Zaku Zaku. So for this one, it's the same. Before I thought that, okay, I want to be a food blogger. So I, what I did was I kept taking picture and kept posting it. So I'm not really a food blogger, nor even a blogger. The same because I told you before, I'm not confident in my English, nor I did, I did take any uh, photography lessons. But then I kept taking pictures of the food I eat. I post it online, I type it. And uh, at first, of course, no one cares, but then people starting to care. And then you get to meet other people and then they realize that, oh yeah, I know Rachel. She's the one who always uh, posts a review about uh, restaurants or about food. And then in the end, you will see, look, I get invited by different, uh, Bonap is a, a food uh, platform, food blogging expat platform in the Shanghai. And Zaku Zaku is a brand uh, in also Shanghai. And you will see that uh, I get invited and I even look like a professional blogger, even though I'm not. So it's sometimes the term uh, fake it till you make it is true. <laughs> so you just uh, keep doing it. And then in the end, it will come natural. So just put yourself out there. And then this one too, I wasn't really good in sports or any physical activities because in high school too, when I was part of choir, so I was exempted to, with the physical education or the physical fitness. So it was just recently when I started. So it's the same. I started, I started uh, working out. I started going to the gym, going to yoga, going to boxing. And I kept posting it again, like, yeah, I'm, I'm being fit. And I kept doing it myself. And in the end, again, I got invited to other events. So here you will see New Balance invited me for their running events and uh, Lululemon for their boxing event. Dan Skin is a leggings brand for their ballet workout event. And then, yeah, these are the others where I got invited to. And then you will see in Instagram, this one in the middle is Boxing Meets Beauty. They also like um, reposted my posts just because I believe that, uh, okay, I'll just keep doing it. And then the others also believe that you can do it. And then you, the opportunities start to come up. So it's how the opportunities come up. You need to put yourself out there. And now this one is also the another part of my foodie adventure because I kept posting and got invited to, to the foodie blogging. So Girl Gone International is an international community of, uh, of women around the world. And uh, because I kept attending events, I love to attend events. So in the end, after three years of attending their events and being interested with the food, uh, I was uh, chosen as the foodies and nightlife, nightlife manager of uh, Girl Gone International Shanghai chapter. So you will see as well that uh, it doesn't, like the opportunities or what we have now don't come immediately. You need to work for it. And uh, how do you work for it? Just what uh, I think Gregory said a while ago too, you need to have the kapal ng mukha, which is really working. So if you don't know anything, you need to ask if you want to meet someone go out there and make the connection. If you want to get advice, uh, 
ask advice. And if you want to meet people, just go out there and meet people. So the people that you will meet actually are not always uh, like nice or entertaining or the, the people that you have the same interest with. So that's why you need to have a keep learning and keep growing uh, mentality. So it's not only in school that you are learning. Until now, I'm still learning. Like I learned from the previous speakers uh, and still now I'm still learning from the people around me. So there's always something that I can, you or we, all of us can improve on. Like now I'm also learning um, French. Like uh, because my husband is French. So in the future, I'm thinking perhaps I need to uh, learn French too. So in Japan, I also learned the uh, Japanese because I need to I need it for my work. But the, and Chinese, even though I know how to speak Chinese now, I still keep actually learning Chinese. I have an app where I learn Chinese still every day. So communication skills, it's also the same. I still go out for networking and try to talk to people, meet people from with different uh, perspective, different age. I love talking to people younger than me or people older than me because you can learn from them as well. So that's why I put that uh, picture too. You can see I talk to different, even the kids there. So this is when I volunteered uh, teaching English. So yeah, so how read books, hang out with other people and always uh, be, um, what's that? Be more open-minded. And uh, of course, the most important thing in life, even though uh, you have successful career or no matter how successful you think you are, don't forget those who helped you on the way. Those Sorry, the grammar is wrong. See, even the grammar here is wrong. Don't forget those who helped you on the way. So, of course, I've never forgotten the, all of the, the, the lessons that I've learned from, from high school, all of my friends who helped me, my family who supported me, uh, my teachers, my professors, my mentors, my coach. The thing here, why is it important? Because now um, we are... We have gotten so busy in life and there's always like, we want to, we want, it's like we are focused a lot about ourselves. So I always want to do things. I want to be like this. I want to be like this, that some people think that the world revolves around yourself, but actually it's not, it doesn't work like that. And you will not get far if you don't uh, um, stay humble. So that's why you always uh, should always, Look, uh, what's that? You you should always uh, not forget those people who's been there, supporting you when you were just starting or when you were like already successful. So yeah, and uh, sorry it got too long, and I think I talked too much too. But anyway, if you have any questions or if you want some advice, like uh, other interview, like uh, advice for how to find these opportunities or just uh, some basic questions, I have put my WeChat or Instagram or email address. Just uh. Note that sometimes I reply late, but I will always reply. So yeah, thank you very much again uh, um, to everyone for listening and to for inviting me for the speaker. So to be a speaker, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Miss Rachel Chua. Your story inspires us, especially those who are into fashion like me and those who plan on establishing a business in the competitive market. From this webinar, we can see that the math, Chinese, and science fundamental concepts we learn from our alma mater can get us to places, not to mention how active our community is, such as our alumni. Furthermore, Ms. Chua shared that one thing to be successful is not enough. We need to define it, work for it, and retain it as much as we can. We also need open-minded people who understand that know-it-alls cannot exist to surround and remind us every once in a while that learning never ends and we must not stop too. Next, Ms. Caitlin C. is here to introduce our sixth guest speaker. To introduce our next speaker, she is an alumnus of Chiang Kai-shek College who then continued her studies at the LaSalle University, majoring in computer application and mathematics, during which she won awards such as honorable mention and most outstanding undergraduate student of College of Education in 2001. She brought this excellence to Boston University in 2005, where she pursued Master of Education in Policy and Planning and Administration. 
and where she was also a member of Phi Lambda Theta International Honor Society and Professional Association in Education. As for work experience, she served as a student teacher at La Salle Green Hills, then moved to work as a mathematics and computer teacher at her alma mater, Chiang Kai-shek College. Then again moved to work as a math teacher at Framingham High School in Massachusetts. And finally settled as a math teacher at Claremont High School in California, where she served as technology integrator for the math department and math club advisor, and even won the Teacher of the Year Award for 2015. I put a math joke here, but I don't know any, so I'll stick to what I'm semi-good at, which are fun. She puts the com to tense in computer and can in Candice, whereas I put the try in trigonometry. In hindsight, maybe the puns were a bad idea. Please put your hands together for Miss Candice Chua. All right, hello everybody. Um, Thank you for that great introduction. Um, my name is Candice Chua, and I'm Chiang Kai-shek College Batch 1998, and I'm a high school math teacher here um, in Claremont, California. The city of Claremont is just outside of Los Angeles. We are about an hour east of downtown LA. Um, I have taught all levels of math subjects, starting from like remedial math to algebra one, pre-calculus, IB math, um, and currently I'm teaching advanced placement calculus, which is like a college level class, but taken by high school students. Um, I love being part of Chiang Kai-shek College family. This is where I had um, my first formal education nursery. This is where I graduated high school. Um, this is where I had my first teaching job. Um, I just love the amazing connections that I build within these schools with my classmates, my teachers, my counselors, the administrators, you know, this is the place that um, really inspired and influenced me to become an educator. So when I was in your shoes, about to graduate from Chiang Kai-shek College, I remember thinking about what major or degree should I pursue. I kind of knew growing up, I had it in my mind that I want to become a teacher, but there's always a small voice in the back of my mind asking, do I really want to become one? So I eventually went to De La Salle University for my bachelor's degree. So I went, um, I got a double degree for education in computer application and BS math. And then after I graduated, I applied to Chiang Kai-shek College for a teaching position. And luckily, you know, they offered me a job. Um, and I taught math and computer in Chiang Kai-shek College. After a year of teaching at Chiang Kai-shek College, I knew this is for me. I want to pursue this path. And I have the passion of being a teacher, of doing this job. And I think I'm quite good at it. But I feel, I felt that, the, you know, there's something still missing. I want to become more independent. I want to learn and explore more. I want to travel. So luckily, I have a very supportive parents and brothers and no matter what I have decided, they were there to guide me and support me. So I went to Boston University for, um, in Massachusetts for my master's degree in educational management. Um, I work at their admission office while finishing up my degree. The plan at that time is that after I graduate with my master's, I would go back to Manila, manage a school, or even start my own school. Um, however, Destiny have different plans for me. One of my professors encouraged me to stay for another year and try teaching in Massachusetts. You know, learn the educational system here, compare it to the one in the Philippines, bring the best of both worlds together. Teaching in Massachusetts, it is really so different than in schools in Manila. I mean, culture shock. Na culture shock talaga ako. Students there are more outspoken for one. Um, students will go from one classroom to another between periods and teachers are the one who stayed in the classroom. Um, compared to that time when I was in high school, we use a lot of technologies here in, in US schools. Um, I was teaching using you know, smart board in pre-calculus that, that my first year, 
teaching here. I was expected to teach using graphing calculators and I haven't even used one. So, and at that time, walang, walang YouTube or TikTok there to search for, you know, tutorial videos. So I asked um, a fellow teacher for a calculator. I borrowed the calculator. I, you know, read the manual and then I just learned it with the students. Um, it's a very nice change. Um, I've learned how to adapt and be strong and not to be afraid of new challenges. So after teaching in Massachusetts for a year, I just enjoyed teaching and I have decided to stay and teach here instead of going back home. But it's too cold in East Coast, especially during the winter season. So I moved to California to continue teaching here because the weather in California is really great. And I love the school where I'm currently teaching at. This will be my like 16th year here um, in Claremont High School. Um, as a teacher, I love interacting with students, you know, watch them learn, watch them grow from being an awkward teenagers to a very successful and confident young individuals. Being a teacher also helps me feel young and old at the same time. Um, I always been working with like teenagers, so that makes me feel younger. But seeing them mature, finish high school, college, you know, get a job, start a family, that part makes me older. So teaching is not without a headache. It is not easy being a teacher, especially now, you know, during this pandemic with all the online classes. But I learned to love both the good and the bad side. And honestly, I don't think there's any professions, job, careers without any hardship, without challenges. So as you think about your own journey, starting a new chapter in life during this pandemic, and you have been online too for the, you know, for the couple of years now, and it is not easy. And give yourself permission that it's okay to not know where the future will be. So I just really want to encourage you, think about what you like to do what gives you happiness, what motivates you. So do you like working by yourself? Um, are you more social? You like collaborating with others? Do you like being in front of a computer all day long, programming, coding? Do you like going outside, you know, talking to customers? Do you like working with young kids or working at a hospital treating patients? So do you like to travel? So knowing what you like, know your strengths, but most importantly, know your weaknesses. And right now, make this world your classroom. So don't just sit back and observe. Be an active participant. And you know, you might change your mind along the way, but it's okay. It's all part of learning. Just enjoy the journey sees all the opportunities of learning new things. You know, as I said, like be a sponge, absorb as much as you can, learn as much as you can, because you'll never know which direction your life will take you. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep this short. Okay, um, so thank you so much for your time. Happy graduation to all the seniors, senior high graduates, Jayo. And I just want to take this opportunity too to thank you all my teachers in Chankasha College. I would not be here um, where I am today without your teaching and guidance. And thank you, Mami Sidra, for inviting me to this wonderful event. From Wei Yeshi, what if the dream job does not pay enough for the bills? I assume this question is addressed to any of our speakers. That's a very good question. Um, I I think uh, wait uh, sorry Bien do we 
just uh, answer the questions one by one, or is it, or if I'm like I'm I'm open up to help with the first question. Uh, sir, I think yes. due to time constraint, we can only entertain one question. So I think it might be better if each of the speaker can answer. Oh, okay. Um, okay, I'll, I think, yeah, because of time, I'll, I'll just uh, go straight with these two questions. I'll go first with the what if the dream does not pay enough for the bills. Um, like everyone said, you have to be realistic, first of all. Um, finding the right job. There's actually that four circles like Ikigai, if you guys can Google that. Find something that you love. Find something that you're good at. Find something that's helpful for the community. Find something that you can make money on. So that's very important. With that, said, with that being said, I think dream jobs, there's so many jobs in the world. Even if, for example, badly, this is a bad example. Even if you haul trash, you're a gar garbage collector, right? Assuming that's your dream job, I hope not. But if you're a garbage collector uh, and you create a company that collects garbages, let's say you have 20 people, that makes it, that can, that, yeah, and then you help the city collect garbages. That's, you can still make a lot of money from that. So, so far for me, for example, in the US, I know teachers are, based on what I see in news, they're also underpaid, but there's a way to, to get paid better, you know, maybe you, further, you, you pursue further studies to get more credentials. So I think, um, I think um, as long as you put your heart into it, whatever dream job that is, there's always a way to make more money, at least based on my experience, because a lot of people may say, oh, marketing doesn't make a lot of money. Uh, maybe because if you're in the agencies or creative ad agencies, yeah, especially in the start, but if you work um, and you put your heart into it and you have the credentials, eventually it's going to pay the bills. And um, so don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid in trying. And I think um, just trust the process. That's one thing for me. Eventually it will pay, pay the bills. I think I'll, I'll take a stab at the first question too. Um, you know, the dream job now may not necessarily be your dream job tomorrow or next month. I mean, sooner or later, I think you realize that, well, you know, this is not really paying the bills. And, um, you know, you may want to keep that dream job, but uh, at the end of the day, you're going to have to find something to keep your lights on. Right. So, so, um, you know, just like what the other speakers have said, don't, uh, you know, don't, don't, don't be afraid of U-turns. If, if you have to go on a U-turn or maybe go left, go right. If you want to keep your dream job, that's fine. Um, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to have to have some, you know, income for yourself. Um, now, I, I think I'll, I'll take a stab at the second question as well. How do they cope with stress in their careers? Stress is going to be part of any career, okay? I, I have patients tell me that, you know, and dami daming stress, even living life, okay? Um, there's there's going to be every, everyday stresses. Um, what I do personally, I, I tune out of work. Okay, if I'm not at work, I'm not at work. I, I, I don't think about it, or at least I try not to. Um, when I have time, I do some things that, that I want. I, I actually do some gardening on the side. Uh, before, before the pandemic, we were traveling. Um, you know, I, I, I do things that I want. I do things that I love. Um, because when you're at work, you're at work. You're going to be stressed. When you're not at work, you tune out, or at least that's what I do. Probably let me try to answer the second question as well. So sorry for my background. I'm currently at KFC having my lunch. So how do we cope with stress? So basically for my side, I find joy in the job. So the job itself might be stressful. However, there will be certain pieces of it which makes you want to do it. So you just need to find that pilitik factor in your job and you should be okay. So for me, 
other than my normal office job, I found my passion outside, which is to teach, which is also another job. However, since I like teaching, that's the reason why I find enjoyment in it. And even if it's stressful, checking papers, preparing for classes, I enjoy it. So you just need to find that one single kiliti factor in that job, then stress can be gone. I go to the gym on the side as well, just to stress relieve myself. So that's what I can say for this question. So um, I'll take a stab for both questions. So I feel like for the dream job, sometimes um, we feel that this is the job that we want to, pero pagdating mo sa sa field na yon hindi mo masyado gusto um i won't say keep an open mind because then you might have like you know the left turn and the u turn and everything but eventually you will find one that you're really passionate about it might not be the dream job you have for you know when you were a teenager right now but if you keep on going keep on learning kasi kunyari ngayon you hate math right but you still learn it eventually baka magamit mo in the future you'll never know and for the stress um especially same di ba for teaching with this pandemic and everything we just like flipped the switch and we went online you know like overnight it was super stressful that i'm teaching you know in my bedroom you know doing the online zoom so for the you know 5 6 months the first 5 6 months of online learning i feel like i'm working 24/7 and after that, a good thing about teaching is, you know, we have summer breaks. So I did not, you know, do anything for the two months. I just kind of have, you know, just to refresh myself. I learned Rub Rubik's Cube. I learned how to do beads, something that's not job related. So I can, you know, balance my life out. And then we're back to in person here. And it is actually a lot more stressful because you're kind of like afraid of your safety at the same time you still um, want to teach the students and you want the students to be you know as far apart from each other social distancing but they don't know how to do that <laughs> so stressful than an in-person um teaching right now so i feel like you have to find a balance na kung stress ka na do something else para ma but even out the stress. Oh, yeah. So for me, I'll also answer both uh, questions or give advice for both questions. So for the first one, about the dream job, like what Miss Candice has said, and also the other speakers that uh, don't uh, be afraid to take the U-turn or your dream job now may not be the dream job in the future. Like, for example, to be honest, for me, like my dream job is to be a singer. <laughs> but then, like uh, you said, like, of course, you need to pay the bills and some other people to like think like, oh, what if you don't become a singer? Then, uh, of course, uh, how can you earn money? So for me, I took uh, like, of course, a degree and uh, had a job. But then uh, for others, not uh, for me, um, to still think that I can have the dream job, sometimes I still sing, uh, perform in other events or if there's any other events I still sing if there's any opportunities I still sing so it's not a job but it's still like so, something like fulfilling your dream and for the others so this is about uh, singing but for the others I knew like for example they took IT but they actually want to to be in fashion or they took a, a different uh, course or now they have a different career but they want to be another industry so for the others what they do I think is uh, they still continue with the career that they have uh, now for a few years, but then on the side, they start to build the dream job or the dream career that they're doing. So they may think that, okay, on the side, while having this job that pays the bill, I will do this uh, as a part-time. And then in the end, when you think that the, that part-time can be a full-time or you've got the connections already that you needed and the opportunities are open, then, then now they shift to that dream job. So it can also be be a way for that. And then for the stress for me, uh, to, to cope with stress, I think uh, physically doing something can help you change your mind because sometimes you think that uh, for others, meditation work, uh, they try to clear their mind. But for those people who are difficult 
have difficulty in clearing their mind, they need to do something physical like me. So I need to go to gym. I need to cook or need to do something uh, difficult just to force your mind to, to, to change, to stop thinking about the work or to stop thinking about the thing that stressed you out. And also, of course, talking to people really helps. So I think it's a cliche, but uh, you need to talk to, keep in touch with your family, keep in touch with your friends, especially uh, the high school friends that you have now. You need to keep it because it's actually what you were it reminds you of what you were or who you were before having this career. So when you were like young, you think that, oh, I'm so happy when I was young. So now oh, too much stress, we are adults. So, but when you actually like, for example, now I talk to my high school friends, I feel like we are still in high school. So it's like that. It's like, uh, and when I talk to my family or my brother, older brother, I still think that I'm the little sister that he needs to protect. Uh, or uh, when I talk to my parents, I still feel that I'm a little child. So it's like that. So talking helps as well. So that's it. Okay. Then I think from my side, uh, what if the dream job does not pay enough for the bills? I think the answer depends on the, your social status in life, whether you're, you're well off, you're rich or not so rich. Of course, if you're rich enough, if you can afford, uh, you know, then go, go proceed uh, with your dreams. You know? But if, if not, I think it is important uh, that we become realistic, you know, that a job has to pay for the bills. I think it is important, you know. So I think it is just about social status and finding the right balance to make it work. Okay, maybe a little bit of sharing uh, from myself also. Uh, I'm into IT now, but uh, 20 years down the road or, you know, 18 years before that, I didn't like IT. I like I love marketing, okay? But I thought during that time, marketing was too easy for me. So I tried something that I didn't like, which was IT then, because I thought during that time, during that time, it was Y2K year. I thought during that time, IT would be the future. Digitalization would be the future. And I thought in my mind uh, that it pays well, at, at least the starting salary. So that was the motivation during that time for me to try, okay, I like marketing, but I will go into IT. Then what if I mix marketing and IT together? That becomes IT strategy. That becomes digitalization strategy. How you make it different than the norms, than the status quo. So that is the first one. The second question, how do you cope with, with stress in, in careers? I think you just have to embrace it. Make it as part of your DNA. That stress will just come and stress will, will go. You just have to embrace it and face it head on. Okay? Pag sobda na talaga, I think find another ways. Family, friends, talk to people, lash it out. Then you will feel better. Yeah, that's, that's a little sharing from my side. Thank you.